Since the 1950s, vaccinations have been jabbed into the arms of children for the greater good. Sure, there was some tears and crying as doctors stuck us with needles, but then we were given some candy and pretty much everything was forgiven. Now, it's largely because of vaccinations that none of us grew up with our legs in braces or were only able to survive in an iron lung because we were riddled with polio. In fact, polio is basically non-existent in the modern world, pretty much solely because of child vaccinations. And it's not just polio. They went on to tackle a whole bunch of other major diseases. Smallpox, for example, which has killed millions of people, is gone probably forever. Same goes for measles, mumps, and rubella, which can be disfiguring and unsightly, and even lethal in some cases. These have all been eradicated in certain parts of the world. There is a but, though. Vaccinations are made from dead or weakened diseases, so the way they fixed polio was by injecting, well, polio into kids. And not just dead diseases. There's a whole bunch of chemicals in there with names I can't even pronounce. All of this has resulted in a movement over the last few years to ban vaccinations for the harmful effects they could be possibly having on children. Originally, they were only concerned about one specific chemical within the MMR vaccine. That'd be the one that stops people getting measles, mumps, or rubella. That was linked to cause autism in children. A serious concern, of course. However, the concept that this one part of a very specific vaccine was bad has since ballooned into all vaccines cause autism in children. Indeed, around the time that this is all going on, there's a dramatic increase in the amount of autism diagnosed in children. The reality of the situation is that all the concerned parents really are worrying over nothing, though. The original studies show that the link between autism and the MMR vaccine was not found to be reproducible, and that also the scientists kinda lied about his results, meaning the whole vaccination autism thing was entirely fantasy rather than reality. The paper that linked all these things, by the way, was retracted in 2010. Even the issue about increased diagnosis of autism in children is a bit of a myth. While the fact that autism diagnosis is true, the real cause isn't necessarily linked to vaccinations, and it is believed that the primary cause is because the definition of autism increased to contain a large range of people. This in turn resulted in a dramatic increase in the amount of diagnoses, without actually changing anything about the people. As Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Similarly, the label of autism doesn't change the person you put it on, only help identify them. But what of all those other nasty chemicals I was talking about? They aren't just in one vaccine, and surely they can do bad things to you. Mercury is a serious concern to many of these groups, as it's known to be toxic. Phenoxyethanol, ammonium sulfate, and sorbitol are also on the list of being suspected toxic substances or carcinogens. Once again, the reality of the situation is that these chemicals, when in vaccines, are perfectly fine for you. Mercury was a huge concern, but even when it was in vaccines, it was in a dosage so small that eating a fillet of fish would expose you to as much as three times the amount of mercury. In case you're wondering, your body is perfectly fine with the amount of mercury in fish, and while this doesn't mean you should go around drinking the stuff, you don't have to worry about it if you enjoy your seafood. Most of the other chemicals that the anti-vaccination groups are concerned about are because of their suspected side effects. Like mercury though, even if these were dangerous, which most likely they aren't, they are all found in such small quantities that everyday activities result in a greater exposure than vaccines. The final type of thing that anti-vaccination groups get up in arms about are things that they kind of just don't like the sound of. Plainly put, they don't like the origin of something that has been proven to not only be safe, but actually beneficial to the human body, so they refuse to have it put in their children. This generally consists of animal products that they would happily eat themselves, such as chicken embryo, or eggs, or porcine tissue, or pork. I would present facts as to why these things are good and necessary for vaccinations and human life in general, but the anti-vaccination movement doesn't give any reasons as to why these things would be bad. They purely exist to flesh out their list so that people can be scared into believing something they shouldn't. Remember, the average dose of, let's say, a hepatitis vaccine for children is around 10 microliters, so that's 1,000 times smaller than a milliliter. This has actually then been diluted in a saline solution, or sterile water, which is more or less most of what's in blood anyway, to about 0.5 milliliters, just so that it can be handled. At the end of the day though, these chemicals have been shown through testing that they are safe in their use in vaccines. Even if they're thought to be unsafe and cause people legitimate concern, like the chemical that was thought to cause autism, there exists a precautionary principle. As soon as the concern began, the chemical that was supposedly at fault was removed from vaccines. There doesn't even have to be well-illustrated research into the matter or long-term studies, it's purely precautionary. It also exists that in case something could possibly cause problems, it's taken out of circulation and tested to prove that it's safe. The largest issue that vaccines actually cause is that they are still kind of a medical procedure and there may actually be complications. But there are systems to cope with this. After a vaccination, there's a period of monitoring where complications can be caught and fixed. 
The truth is, though, that this minor chance of a complication has saved millions of people from being either hospitalized, crippled, or killed further on in their lives. But still, these are important questions that need to be asked. We need to know if children are safe and the child vaccines do not cause any ongoing health issues. We do know now, though. We have the answer, and we need to move on instead of flimsily grasping at the potential threat from something that is, in fact, safe. <laughs>